How's it going? I have a black box. <laughs> I forgot that I uh, put on the, the fade to black here. <laughs> uh, oh, man, I am missing everything today. We are not working on Blender. We are going to do Rapier with React 3 Fiber. Let's do this and this and this. Ah, oh, it's down. Oh well. All right. So, Rapier is a physics engine. Um, a couple streams ago, we tried a uh, library called Canon, which used a fork of that called ES Canon, I think it was. Um, and we got physics working. We dropped in a model that we made in Blender and it bounced around like with like you'd expect with a physics engine but it was kind of kind of janky we did a lot of like spins and things were like inside of other things um and eventually we got it to look uh, halfway decent but there is a new library called um it is from the same group. <laughs> hey, Sander. Yes. You've been messing with 3GS too, haven't you? Um, I want to go to your home page. No, not your home page. Um, I guess it's probably on their GitHub. GitHub works. You move to P5 these days, 2D. Yeah, I feel that. I did a lot of uh, D3JS back in the day um, and have uh, still recently used it a little bit too, but um, I kind of went 2D to 3D and it seems like uh, <laughs> you're doing the opposite. I that When I used it though, that was... I think before P5 existed, um, there was inverted paths, right? Uh, since, since since we're talking about it now, P, P5JS, there was a... Was there libraries that led to this? Or was it... Maybe it was actually P5. But there, there's, there's been over the year. Yeah, okay, it is processing. Yep. Um, I believe it started out as a Python thing. So this has been around for a while. I'm pretty sure, but I believe P5JS has really come into its own in the past couple of years, past three, three, four years maybe. So that was, I, I, I think it was more experimental when I was working with D3JS. But um, can I can I do, do you stream Xander? You don't, I, I don't know if you stream, but um, drop, your, drop your Twitter link, that'll work. You, uh, you post a bunch of your screenshots and stuff on your Twitter. Check out what Xander's doing. It's uh, some pretty neat stuff. Um, so we've been working with React 3 Fiber, which is a built on top of 3JS, um, which is 3JS is a WebGL library. React 3 Fiber uses 3JS, hi kitty, and the React scheduler to make the 3JS more performant. Um, and with this, they kind of bring an ecosystem. They've, we, we use some of their helper libraries. Oh, yeah. 
get hair all over me. Um, and they've been also working on a few other things like what we've pulled in React Spring. Um, that's for the uh, 3D text, which hopefully I didn't break. A hey. um, that was 3GS. The and the, they've got a couple other like gesture libraries and whatnot that we didn't that aren't going to be useful for our use case. Uh, we use this GLTFS or GLTFJSX. There we go. Which converts, I mean, you can you can read it right here. GLTFs into JSX. GLTF, we can get out of Blender. So we've been doing a little bit of Blender to uh, React 3 Fiber scenes. Um, and then a couple streams ago, we did use Canon, which Canon has been around for some time, but then it kind of went on main, uh, kind of went unmaintained, and yeah, Canon ES was a fork of that. But there is a new physics engine that they've been working on, Rapier, and Rapier. I had heard of Rapier in Rust, um, in Rustland. I don't really know that there's much else in the JavaScript. Or at least I haven't heard of other use of it in the JavaScript side of things. Um, but from what I hear, Rapier is pretty solid. So we're going to get... Uh, kitty tail. We're going to give Rapier a try today. Um, and we might do a little bit of Blender to uh, GLTF to our scene and throw it in a Rapier. So what we've been doing is let's get this started up here. We have been working basically a stream overlay. Uh, so right now the overlay that's here, if you do any channel point uh, redemptions or that, that 3D command, that uses a helper library from this group uh, called dry and it's doing the 3D text. So we've got dynamic 3D text uh, that comes in. Uh, and then we we also have a separate page now for our models. And the last time, whoop, whoop, where'd my window go? Okay, I lost my new tab. Localhost. So this is what we got last time. Uh, you can see there's some like it going inside of each other kind of stuff going on here. And we're going to see what the Rapier physics engine does instead of it, instead of a uh, cannon. Now I thought we had, yeah, we have orbit controls. Okay. Um, so we've got, we've got now, we now have two pages. Uh, so there's actually layers here. So the reason I can't click and drag is because we have uh, the alert layer. The alert layer is over the top of our model layer. So I, I also split it up in separate pages. So it works, but we get this weird two models going into each other and then eventually they just like boop, and tip over. You can see they're starting to starting to tweak. So we're, we're going to see what the, uh, the Rapier physics engine does. Um, and I, I imagine it's going to be very, there you go, not tipped over. going to be a very similar implementation. Hi, kitty. NPM add this. Oh, and that's interesting too. They use Box and Taurus from React 3 Dry. So they're actually using the the 
As I understand, physics engines will use effectively like a bounding box around your model to do the actual like collision detection. Um, and I believe part of this is for performance because if you have this very complex object, it's easier to put a box around it and just say, hey, any contact with that box around it, that's that's going to cause uh, your the, the physics response. Rather than trying to map all of those different services and whatnot in your actual model. So React 3 Dry is this the helper library we were talking about, and it's got uh, built-in models, I believe, and it looks like you can actually use those for the uh, rigid bodies, I guess you would call it. Oh, no, no, no. Actually, they, they've got, they're just using those um, in the example. Never mind. Never mind. So there's rigid body and okay we've got a couple of different colliders colliders is what they call it and they've got an auto generation thing so colliders is the the uh, term that they're using to uh, depict this layer that determines when uh, we should have a physics response why did this work Um, we found this from the root. Okay, so apparently they're on a slightly older version. I mean, that's probably fine. NPM outdated. So this is NPM version 8. I can pump my... Uh, And when there's conflicts, I definitely appreciate the additional context that they give with those conflicts. Why are you taking so long? NPM outdated, what are you doing? But what that's saying is we've got in our package JSON, where are you, 3JS. We've got 3JS this. Rapier is asking for a dependency of 1.39 or 139. So there's a new version of 3JS and parcel is a little bit behind. I think we could probably just bump all these and force it. Um, so React Spring 3. Wow, they did two minors since I did this, upgraded this last time. Oh. And a bunch on dry. It seems like uh, dry has been getting a Getting a lot of attention, which is nice. Fiber and 3JS. Let's go to 1.3 or 1.4.3. Wait for that to install. So what uh, what other plans are you uh, have for P five JS sender? If you're still sticking around, seems like you've kind of just been doing an exploration. Okay, so we got rapier. Let's pull in the physics and rigid body. And this is going to be in our models.
so we've got let's look at these colliders um i think we need to understand those a little bit better so cuboid creates a cuboid collider okay thank you ball creates a sphere trimesh creates a trimesh trimeshes are massless by default okay oh you can see here too rapier.rs i wonder if it's actually using wasm to do the physics stuff Does it have a dependency on anything with rapier? Um, it doesn't say anything, but it's it's using preconstruct. So I wonder if it's doing. Yarn release. Um, okay. All right. Mm, okay, so it looks like we have this library, which I'm going to guess is the library doing Wasenbeinchen. Official bindings, okay. Yep. There we go. Awesome pack. <clears throat> so, for anybody that is unfamiliar with Wasm, uh, Wasm is a uh, web assembly language that the browser can now understand. There is a few libraries out there that can handle Wasm and take code that isn't written in JavaScript convert it into Wasm, and then it could be used in the browser. Uh, Rust is a very popular use of Wasm, um, and they have a pretty tight integration. Um, but you can do like, like C and C Sharp or something, I think, too, and um, they're all, all the other languages are starting to get um, at least some base level support. It definitely seems like Rust is further along. So what they're doing is Rapier is written in Rust. Uh, they use that Rust library directly, run it through a Wasm build, and we get a file called a .wasm, W-A-S-M. And that is what then gets imported. So the I'm, I'm presuming that's what gets imported. That's, that's the, the typical workflow here. Um, so you can see like there's the .rs is Rust. src.ts. Got a lot going on here. I'm not quite sure where they actually do the. Yeah, you can you can see they're they're building all these with Wasm Pack. So you get these file files that then can be imported and used in the browser. Um, and this. Uh, React 3 fiber implementation is using that library to uh, pull in Rapier. So, okay, so colliders. Um, I imagine Rapier has better information as far as colliders, so maybe we can give that a try. Okay, yep. Cuboids, balls, capsules, compounds. So a mesh is kind of like a flat surface, I guess. Cat hair in my mouth. Lovely. So maybe we just stick with the, it sounds like the hull is the default, right? Yep. 
guess it doesn't actually say. Well, let's try a hull. We can pretty easily change it a little later. So we've got physics. Um, we got to put the rigid body in there. I don't know that. Well, we're going to need a plane. I don't know how that's going to act in here. Because this is still doing the used plane. Rigid body, rigid body sphere. Let's take the plane out for right now. We're going to just see what it does. Let's start it up here. So the, what we had before with use cannon is we had a plane and a plane is just a flat surface. And so we essentially had a floor and we were dropping the basically columns down onto this floor. And then we were inserting them at a height above the plane so they would actually drop and have contact. Now without that, I don't know what it's going to do. Error out. <laughs> this is context not found. Okay, so it's still using some... Oh, maybe we should try empty cache. Okay, so I think we still have some Canon stuff that we did not get rid of. Classes, model canvas, suspense, physics, rigid body. Ah, okay, so we still have a box in here. Um, I guess it's doing this automatically, so I don't think we actually even need that in there anymore. Dropping forever. Okay, so we do need the plane. I am actually curious what debug does. Let's drop debug in there because I want to see what that does and then we're going to try to put a plane in there. I don't see it's not immediately obvious with the debug uh, experimental not all ships are supported I wonder if it's a cache thing. I don't know. I guess I'm not seeing anything. We are definitely getting the physics because it's dropping. Um, and we we ha we can do some response stuff too. So if it's if it's if there is contact, so if there is collisions, then we can we can do things like log out which I think I'm actually going to drop in there because it would be nice to see that. Hmm. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's cool. So what, what, uh, material? Okay. We got material. Okay. Collisions outside of rigid bodies. Uh, 
All right. So we have we don't have a plane, and we need a plane. And it looks like they're using uh, helpers from Dry. So I think what we're going to do is go to Dry and see if they have some sort of helper that we can use. They were using the cube and the circle or the sphere, I think. Um, shapes plane. So they do have a plane. So we can do something like this. Pull in the plane. We don't need this plane anymore, but we do need an import for plane. Okay, so I'm not, I'm, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but here we can play it again. Um, there is a little piece down on the bottom. It's rotated the wrong way, so we'll have to fix that. But you can see there is uh, red outlines around it, and I believe that's the debug. We'll play it again. See, there's those red outlines there. I think that's that debug. Um, so we need to make it flat. Let's let's go ahead and look at the docs on that, rather than trying to guess here. Um, it doesn't help us out much, does it? Um, I definitely want it bigger. So let's say thirty. Um, and we might need to do a rotation or something on it. So it's much bigger. Now we don't want it to move. So how do you get a floor? Is there... Canvas, suspense, rigid body. Okay, so there's two rigid bodies that they have listed here. Rigid bodies, generate colliders. We can turn off automatic collider generation. So this would be a compound shape. So we actually do want to do a rigid body per object. Okay. So I, I, I think we actually want to do something like this. So do that and that and that and that. So that'll give us a rigid body per each object. There we go. <laughs> um, I don't know where our plane went. Oh, it just gets... That sticks around. And it just yeets everything else. All right, can we rotate our plane? The physics did look a lot better, though. I... I'm impressed. Um, this might end up falling back to general React 3 fiber things. So plane takes an args which determines the size. Um, is it rotation? Maybe? Rotate on rotate Y. We don't have, I'm not sure what, I don't remember what uh, ac the axes are often. So there's X, Y, Z, which determines um, 
One is the, the, the three of them all together determine uh, 3D space. So it doesn't seem like that did anything. Rotate Y takes a an angle. So let's try X. Didn't seem to do anything either. Hmm. That plane does not seem to be rotating. Rotate an object along an axis in object space. Rotate on world axis. So we need to give it an angle and an axis. So if we say, um, guessing it's like that. Um, let's say Y and angle is 90 degrees. Hmm, still nothing. Let's look at uh, the React 3 Fiber Docs quick. Documentation. Object properties. Um, so we got position and we have rotation. Rotation. So it says angle. I'm wondering if it's not actually in degrees. It doesn't say. Let's just say rotation though. It might not be. That TypeScript helpers may not actually be um, correct there. I'm just going to put 90 in for everything and see what happens. There we go. Okay, so we're getting rotation now. Um, if it is vertical, if we rotate... Okay, so our position here, I think this is... Y is the height. So if we rotate around the Y, it'll be like this. If we rotate around the Z, I think the Z is coming out to us. So I think the Z will turn it this way. Oh boy. <laughs> it comes out right at you. Um... That's the uh, when 3D was a new thing, and you the you go to the movies to get those 3D glasses. Everything jumps out of the screen at you. That's that's what it reminded me of. Um, so it's doing a rotation up on um, like uh, up so that there's just a corner up. I think. Can't tell if it's actually doing what we want it to do. Oh my goodness. Okay. Camera's angle is weird there. Um, let's turn off the debug. Now that we can kind of see what it's doing. There it is a triangle.
so it's possible that our our uh, rigid body collision there is not correct. Um, let's do negative. 15 say and I believe that position should put this thing further down so we don't want it to these to like all be in the same spot and just explode out we don't want them to drop and fall we're still getting the drop and fall where is my plane Oh, and that's the other thing. I think they are actually on top of each other still. Is this position not working? Maybe that is part of it too. Um, let's bump these numbers up just to make sure that we've got enough separation. It kind of feels like they are all appearing in the same space. Like this position is not actually being represented. Okay, so we have we have some contact, and depending on our rotation, which is a little bit odd, but um, you can see it landing on there. So it is possible that it's still inside of the. That is really good. I'm impressed how. Okay, so that one's still landing on top of it. I think it's still inside of it. Um, let's say 100. And it still seems like it's angled. So I don't think I have my angle correct either. Can we do some, maybe, maybe we do something other than just a plane. Maybe we give a box to try or a sphere, a rounded box. Here, we'll, we'll try that one, rounded box. Just so we get a little bit more visibility in the object itself. I think we do want to go with the plane long term. And I'm imagining we're going to be doing something like, so if, if this model is going on our stream as an overlay and somebody can do a channel redemption to like make something fall out of the sky basically. Um, I suspect we kind of want to do like a plane on the bottom of the screen here. I have a feeling that's what we're going for. All right, what, what did we forget? Mesh props is not defined. Ah, mesh props, okay. I don't know what those are, so we're just going to take them out. A lot of the React 3 Fiber. Um, okay, so uh, there's there's our little cube. It's still fallen. We're going to have to figure out how to, like, how, how do we put in a... How do we put it in a floor? So we're definitely getting, let's look at the examples. So we're, we're they, they clearly have something that's stationary there. So if we look at their example, 
Um, I don't know that I care which one we do. Shapes. So it's doing a rigid body and a mesh. Type fixed. Okay, okay. So that was, that was the, the piece that we were missing. So we want this rigid body, which represents that round box, to be fixed. So when it comes into the scene, it should stay in one spot. There we go. Okay. So now if we do... Um, a position, perhaps, of negative 30, and we're going to move it, or we're going to make it, um, make it a 10 by 10 by 10. So it should be a little bit bigger and hopefully a little bit lower. So I think we've got the element that we want, but all of the... All of the flanges are still appearing on each other. So that's that's interesting. Well, here we're gonna do, we'll do zero, ten, twenty, thirty. I really need to make a note in my code the coordinate system. It doesn't seem like this is actually doing anything. Yeah, we're going to take it, everything out, except for one. Oh. It's not good like that. Oh, is it freaking out because of that one? It looks like it. All right, so we're just going to have one beam. Or one column, I guess. And hopefully we just see it drop straight down. There we go. And see, this this feels much more realistic. I am kind of impressed with that. Uh, let's add in a second one. Where's the other one? I mean, I guess that number is pretty big now. That's <laughs> probably not even invisible. Um, where are you, other one? And some caching going on here again. Oh, okay. They're on top of each other. I just saw it. Where was it? I just saw it land on top of each other. I was pretty sure I did. Maybe not. Um, okay, let's double check, see what they're doing for position. So they, they have rotation on the mesh. What else are they doing? Um, they're using the GL, TF, GL, TF, JSX lib, which is good because that gives me confidence that we can also continue to use that. Um, so there's some position things, there's a rotation. So that tells me that we can do it. 
all shapes. Nice, they got the HTML in there. Suzanne, Suzanne, colliders. Shapes. Oh, we were just in shapes. Wheel position is interesting. So they're using a lot of meshes. Oh, here's a box. Type is dynamic. Interesting. Um, I am curious what the type is doing here. It does seem like they are setting... Uh, setting a position on the rigid body I wonder what that's doing um, I wonder if when it's in physics space we need to this position doesn't seem to do anything it's the this position so we make our thing and now we're setting the position on the rigid body itself that seems to be what's happening here all right so if we do let's zero all of this out that should put them directly on top of each other and it'll like do that explosion thing again Okay, confused. Where'd the other one go? Is it because they are directly on top of each other? I, I am baffled. Um, five, sure. I feel like every time I kind of feel like I got it figured out. We've definitely seen multiple come in here. So do we need to do, does that position need to be on both? That would feel odd to me if we had to put it on both. It's also possible we have some uh, like jaw distance thing going on. Hmm. I am. So we set the camera, we set the FOV, and then we're just doing physics. Out of golf. Um, yeah, that's it. That's interesting. I don't understand why we aren't. There is this group too, which is interesting. Um, I don't know what the group is doing in the context of this. So I got to imagine that there's, I mean, maybe it, 
um, it removes some of that jitter if it's grouped together. Because if you have two um, elements that are like touching or combined or like a circle inside of another circle, they get that weird physics jitter. I wonder if that's if the group helps resolve some of that. Um, I'm kind of baffled by the position though. It doesn't seem like it's actually doing anything. We did get the, the box is definitely lower. The box is definitely lower. So m maybe I am wrong about this and it was a coincidence kind of thing. Because the box does have a position of negative 30. Okay. Why does it... Okay, th I think that's what's gotten me. I save. And then it would seem to work. But when I refresh it, it wasn't. I think that's what was catching me. Now it's... What? <laughs> now it appears and now it works fine. That's what I would expect to see. Um so I wonder if I've got a thing turned on where it's not drawing it if it's not in the camera. Um, we've got a canvas here. Let's zoom this out just a smidgen. Let's see if that's what it is. Because that would, that, I think that would explain it. I don't think it went out any further. Did it go out any further? Position 25. Um, we'll say 10 and 10 maybe. There we go. Oh, no, that was a save one. That's confusing. I don't think this is a rapier library thing. I think this is React 3 fiber. And I'm just not understanding. Um, not understanding that. Because every time I save it, it seems to be fine. We don't have any light in here. Yeah, we have an ambient light. Ah, it went back to wireframe. I wonder if I'm getting like some. It's still wireframe. What the heck? We don't have wireframe on here, and this is definitely still wireframe. I think that's what's catching us here. It's not actually reloading. Like, it's getting some cache. So if we just restart the server, I wonder if it's some... When it reloads, it seems to work. All right, let's kill the let's kill the parcel cache. Um, and we have definitely seen issues with. I don't know if it's a React three fiber and the way they're doing the React and parcels hot module reloading or something. Um, 
definitely seems to be building more at least. There. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. So this makes sense. That makes sense. Um, if we go back to the wire frame. Oh, not wife. Wire. Wire frame. That should make the, the contact a little bit more visible, I think. There we go. Um, let's go back to zero, zero here. I kind of like the camera we had before. And I think that's going to, I think that's going to be it for today. Um, is there anybody that... Is there anybody that uh, we're following that we could raid or something today? Um, I might not have time though. Yeah, I think we're just gonna skip the raid today. Um, so. It works. It seems to work much better than the other one too. Uh, Canon. There's less jank and less like stuff exploding everywhere. Um, I think we can work with this. I think this is going to be pretty good. And we can do... We'll do some sort of command that you can run and it drops objects and we have like a physical plane down at the bottom. And... Then we could start doing some Blender stuff and dropping them into the scenes. I think that'd be fun. So the commands can do different models or something and I'll drop them in. Um, or like build up a structure and we, we can shoot something at it. Play around with the physics a little bit. I think that would be fun. But that's where we're going to call it today. So thanks for stopping by. And I really need that. That bugs me. Oh well. We will deal with that another time. Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Have a good weekend. Keep experimenting. See you next time.